Awaken Beauties, finally, it's here. The truth to empower women to true inner beauty through a healthy mind and inner biology. I am your hostess, Cassandra Keel, a 20-year salon owner, organic beauty product formulator, positive mind management, and clinical hypnotherapist. And I am here to help you stay sane, get sleep, and bring your sexy back. Sponsored by EvokeBeauty.com. EvokeBeauty.com. Now, let's get to it. Welcome to the Awaken Beauty Podcast. I am Cassandra, your organic beauty, positive mind management, and clinical hypnotherapist. And I want to ask you a question, ladies, all of you beautiful, mature women. Tell me, have you ever been told your hair loss is just a part of aging? Now, when women talk about hormonal hair loss, they're generally referring to something called androgenic alopecia. And essentially, this is just a fancy way to talk about hair loss caused by high levels of androgens, especially the hormone and metabolic of testosterone, which we call DHT. So when women have imbalanced levels of androgenic hormones like DHT, they can bind to the hormone receptors of our follicles and put them in their rest phase. So essentially what's happening is that hormonal hair loss is the result of our hair follicles being told to stop growing and to go to sleep instead. Now that is no good resolve right? We want to wake up the hair follicle. We always want to have it an abundance of energy and ATP and metabolic response through our aging years. But the thing is, many of my salon clients, not even ones that are going through menopause that I work with who are approaching or experiencing menopause, have shared with me that they feel completely dismissed by their healthcare providers, and they're completely desperate in asking for help about their hair loss. And with my functional medicine background, I absolutely understand how hard it can be to unwind the onion. So one of the most common explanations that they hear is that their hair loss is just, it's just a normal part of aging. But I think it's important to question this assumption and to try to really truly understand the unique factors meaning the root cause that may be contributing to hair loss, regardless, as I said, of a woman's age. So first, is menopausal hair loss normal? Or are there still root causes of inflammation that need to be addressed even in menopausal women experiencing hair thinning and loss? So I'm here to tell you while it's rampant, menopause hair loss is a normal part of aging, quote unquote, comments that you often hear from a healthcare provider, even a lot of hairstylists that don't really understand the intricacies, or even a well-intentioned friend I know can feel so defeating as a woman that's going through this process. And I know because I've lost 50% of my hair loss in a matter of three months. And I've grown it all successfully back with the luck of our Evoke activating tonic and nutritional protocols. But set aside, given how as a culture we are sicker than ever, we need to be open to the idea that what we perceive as normal, meaning aging, may not in fact be abnormal. So preventable diseases caused by our diet or lifestyle choices are often thought as disease of old age. And so poor health is common, but that does not make it normal. You know, I know there's many, many issues with this. I'm going to get a thyroid test done. What conventional medicine says normal on a thyroid test is completely not appropriate to hormonal and thyroid health at its optimal level. 
So now that we understand the difference between normal and common when it comes to aging, what are some of the really true underlying factors that may contribute to menopausal hair loss for women? So first, understand what is menopause, right? So you're listening to this episode, my dear, and so I'm assuming that I don't need to tell you what menopause is, but to stay on the safe side, let's just make sure we're all on the same page that menopause is when a woman ceases to get her menstrual cycle for over a year's time. That's when we enter into that postmenopausal stage. So healthy non-pregnant women experience a menstrual cycle from the time they reach maturity, meaning puberty, and up until they reach menopause. So the purpose of our cycle is to really It's to facilitate conception. And so each month of our hormonal fluctuation really is readying our body to accommodate for pregnancy. And the egg, if it's not fertilized, then we get our period and the lining of the uterus is shed, preparing for the cycle to happen all over again. So because the process of ovulating generates hormones, progesterone, and testosterone, when a woman reaches menopause, these hormone levels will naturally decrease. And often we see issues with osteoporosis with this as well. So we know that the hair growth cycle is highly sensitive to fluctuations in our hormone levels. So it's intuitively just that we naturally can make sense that our hair health would be impacted during our period or hormone changes. And however we want to view it, the influence of our hormone balance and imbalance really does come back to our circadian rhythms, our chronobiology, our rest and digest, our diet, our lifestyle choices. All of these things need to be acknowledged. And understanding what we can do to work with our bodies during this natural transition and support a healthy hormone balance for this next stage in our life is so key, my ladies, hear me out, so key to promoting hair health in the perimenopause years and beyond, and even menopause and premenopause, because this is already going on at a younger and younger age due to environmental stressors. So let's talk about 5A reductase activity in menopausal hair loss. That's really what this is coming down to today and what I wanted to discuss. So our hormones are all interrelated along pathways in the stem from the hormone building blocks that are made from cholesterol. So for example, testosterone, it can be converted into another hormone called DHT by the enzyme 5A reductase. And even though DHT and testosterone are both androgens and considered to have, you know, a masculine uh, property, you know, the DHT is really what we're looking at and really what we're wanting to break down and fully understand. And so the DHT combined to the hormone receptors in our head follicles blunt the hair growth phase, which we call the antigen phase, and it lengthens the hair's rest phase called the telogen phase. So it stops growing and it just says, chill the hell out, go and take a load off and, and, and relax, which we don't want. So less growing, more resting leads to thin call this miniaturization or sparse looking hair. That's when the follicle is getting so kind of kind of um, suffocated and it gets smaller and smaller with the follicle and eventually it just closes down and it doesn't need longer any grow, any growth. So, you know, many women see this in my chair often are experiencing hair loss, find that they have normal or low blood serum levels of androgenic hormones like testosterone and DHT. So, you know, the, the issue here is that the testosterone, the androgen, the DHT is more potent and it binds to these hormone receptors and causes this die-off effect. And at the same time, it's, it's really confusing because if these are high, it's, it's the fact that someone can be experiencing these symptoms of hormone-related hair loss with normal androgen levels, even though we're seeing the symptoms of what it does. So while it may be that there is another root cause driving the hair loss, it's important to really understand that blood levels of hormones do not necessarily reflect the tissue levels of those hormones. So listen to this. Tissues 
just like our skin and our hair follicles can have androgen levels that are different than levels reflected in a blood test. So the enzyme 5A reductase that converts testosterone to DHT functions at a localized or tissue specific level. Where 5A reductase activity is upregulated, the concentration of DHT will be higher and symptoms of androgens excess may exist. So when it comes to symptoms of hormone imbalance, such as hair loss, it's generally agreed that reducing serum DHT levels shouldn't be the focus for most women. Instead, we need to think about normalizing the 5A reductase activity to balance the tissues of DHT, the levels of DHT. Okay. So we should avoid overgeneralizing and say that the blood levels of hormones don't matter. And we see this in a lot of different areas when testing our hormones as well. So I love, um, you know, the Dutch test because we're really seeing the metabolic pathways. And so higher than optimal levels of androgens like testosterone could still be an issue in women where there is high tissue 5A reductase activity because this may still help drive tissue levels of DHT as always, it goes back to the root cause because if we approach it, um, you know, the why of the 5A reductase activity and why it's high, and then we look at what we can do to support it in to bring it back into balance is another and or a bigger question and viewpoint that we should take. So one factor that is known to contribute to 5 a reductase being high is insulin resistance. Now, this is key because insulin is a hormone that our body uses to carry glucose to our cells so that they can use it for energy. Hello, when I started this podcast, I said we need energy at the follicle to help resolve the miniaturization. So what we want to be is insulin sensitive, meaning that the insulin in our body produces while we are able to take care of the glucose we ingest. No problem right? So when we become insulin resistant, that means what we use to be enough insulin, you know, it used to be enough to carry the glucose is now no longer enough. It needs more energy. You're spinning out. So even before insulin resistant rises to a degree that's considered clinically significant, it's important to have fasting insulin tested so that you can see whether your levels need to be optimized and insulin insensitivity addressed very, very early on in this process will really help diagnose the issues that occur with this fluctuation. Many factors, many, many, such as high carbs, sugar, refined sugars, sedentary lifestyle, stress, lack of sleep, toxins, nutritional deficiencies, all of these may be driving the insulin resistance, which in turn is able to upregulate 5A reductase activity. So although there are pharmaceuticals and alternative medicine treatments to block 5H or 5H you know, reductivity, it's just simply a band-aid. And this is what a lot of these, um, you know, even topicals and ingestibles do. And then it just comes back when you stop. So another modify you know, factor that we may impact this whole 5A reductase activity is definitely stress. And not only do we see that stress can impair insulin sensitivity, but it chronically elevated the levels of stress hormones with cortisol potentially leads to very high 5A reductase levels. So 5A reductase doesn't just function to produce androgen. It's also the key enzyme that is needed, listen, to clear that cortisol to keep levels with healthy range. Your stress mechanisms, we need the 5A reductase enzyme to reduce cortisol. So it's very important to note that chronic stuff, stress itself can lead to androgen production. Okay, so normally our adrenal glands contribute to roughly you know, half of our total androgen levels, but when we are on overdrive all the time, it can increase the amount of androgenic hormones that are produced. 
Now, the primary androgen is DHEA, and its levels have been seen to increase during perimenopause through early postmenopause. And so we really want to look at DHT and high DHA levels. They could be possibly contributing to symptoms like hair loss as well. And then the one final factor I want to talk about is that it may lead to high 5A reductase activity if we have low progesterone, which is also an issue. That's why I take estrogen, progesterone and because it helps me sleep and helps all the other um, you know, functions, immunity increase and, and make well with the body. So, you know, although much of the data that we have on this relationship has been derived from studies on impact that synthetic progesterone called progestins have on prostate cancer, DHT levels, progesterone along with estrogen is commonly viewed as hair enhancing. Now I take a topical estrogen and internal progesterone that's natural. It's, um, you know, it's going to be biomimetic with the body. And it's really about how much is available um, that we extrapolate from these internal and external, um, you know, help with these different modalities to help the body get into balance. And so really you can see the intricacies of how um, progesterone, 5-HA reductase, androgens, all of this kind of comes into play, but the really big thing here is insulin and making sure that our body has the levels to have the energy to get the root of the issue out to the root of the hair so that it has abundant energy to have abundant hair growth. So it all goes back to getting to the root, healthy sleep, healthy diet, healthy stress levels. All of this all comes down to helping our hormones function incredibly well and do us good into our postmenopausal years. So that was a quick rundown. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it can be really confusing. I will follow up with the next one relating to estrogen. And until next time, stay sane, get sleep, and bring your sexy back. And feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions because let me tell you, hair loss is one of my specialties. I love talking about it and figuring out how to resolve the issue. If you need a topical product, by all means, check out our activating tonic, tonic that's two times more powerful than minoxidil at evokebeauty.com. That's E-V-O-Q-Beauty.com. See you next time. Hello, Awaken Beauty. Thank you so much for joining the show today. Were you inspired? Please leave a comment or your own personal aha moment so others can capture exactly what you did. Also, please like and subscribe wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. And if you're interested in high quality natural products for your hair, skin, and wellness, including organic, CBD, please visit evokebeauty.com. Again, that is evokebeauty.com, E-V-O-Q-Beauty.com. And until next time, darling, stay sane, get sleep, and bring your sexy back. Mm-hmm.